lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Yes, Lord. We need you. Hallelujah. They hate and they point and they talk in. I won't fall back. I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on They hate and they roar and they talk and I won't fall back, I'm still walking My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on Sitting in the pew Searching for my purpose okay. The preacher on fire Got me focused in the service He said bless is the man I'm pressing through the fire It sees I'm falling back But I know I'm going higher Favor don't look like favor Look like a dead end You preaching today sir Please say it again Faith is what we hope for Speaking to existence At times I feel lost It's like I'm out of position Then my mind start racing Thinking about David And how he had one stone That dropped him to the pavement Now I hear the words How Joseph was a and even though he fell, his faith was still standing. I'ma toughen up and walk the miles that he chose. He done told me in the gym, but your miles will be closed. The word on fire, the anointing, I can hear it. I'm sitting in this role and I can feel his Holy Spirit. They hate and they point and they talk in. I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they point. Talking, and I won't fall back, I still walk in My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on The devil won't get me, cause the Lord already saved me I'm clutching on this grace, embracing all that he gave me At times I get weary, the storm means I'm tested I ask to be purged, just in case I got infected Before I came in, I was listening to church He said we got the victory, I'm healed from the hurt I started feeling good, but we're the last throughout the week About James 112 and how we serve the one that his name never failed. I hear the altar call, yeah, he pulling on my soul. I'm feeling recharged, I was back on my pose. Was weak for a minute, but great as he. Now I'm walking in my purpose and his favor on me. They hate and they pour and they talk in. And I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they roar and they talk and I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they roar and they talk and I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they roar and they talk and I won't fall back, I'm still walking. To the sky, and I promise, gonna keep on. Uh, amen, amen. Hey, welcome back to uh, Elation Radio. This is Mr. Fizzer. And we're on the day, this uh, day of uh-uh, May the 15th, you're on with Relentless Pursuit. Got my two guests on, and today we got an interesting topic we, we kind of wanted to touch on, and uh, hopefully it'll help each of us uh, get through this uh, pandemic that we're going through known as COVID-19 or coronavirus, COVID-19, you know, I just want to thank God for bringing me back one more game, for allowing me to wake up and uh, 
just want to let everybody know I'm thankful that God blessed you today, that God blessed you yesterday, and God will continue to bless you tomorrow and forevermore. So thank you all so much. I'm proud to be here. Oh, man, today is a good day. I, uh, I've i been sitting back and I've been thinking about some things, and uh, um, and it, it's just been a good day. I've been kind of suffering through a couple little things. I tell you all what, this pandemic – it has opened up my eyes to a few things, and and sometimes I get caught up in uh, in what I'm going through, what I'm feeling, um, and and you know just reading through. And I'll tell you come, come, what passages I'm coming out of. But just reading through today, it just kind of opened up my eyes. And and when I say open up my eyes, I mean like just enlighten me to to this prison that I sometimes put myself in. You know what I mean? Again, it's more or less a prison when I think about, ah, man, my hands hurt. Ah, man, my leg hurt. Whatever. Whatever the ailment is. Ah, man, I'm all alone. Ah, man, I'm not at home. Whatever I'm going through, it just opened up my eyes. So so I will tell you this. Um, today, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit for a few moments before I brought on my guests. And I got my got, got my two trusted uh uh, cohort zone, uh, and I'll introduce them to you again in just a few moments. But Ephesians 4, so Ephesians chapter 4, I was pondering around through verses 11 through 16, and they simply read, uh, I'm reading the NIV version, and they simply read, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become excuse me, we will we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. As each part does its work, man, man. As each part does its work. So <laughs> today, you know, again, I, I, I sit alone in my room, staring at co- the four corners. Okay, now I'm just joking. This ain't this ain't a, a ghetto boy song, but I just had to throw that out there. But today, I want to talk to you a little bit about Christian, the Christian community. And first, I just want to say, Christian community, the Christian community that I experienced. Growing up as a as a young boy in Dallas, uh, growing up as a teenager in Dallas, moving through my adolescence to teenage, as a young man, a young man throughout the country wherever I traveled, uh, when I ran across certain Christians, and when I ran well, actually let me fix that when I ran across Christians, I was always confronted with this with with, with this face of peace and prosperity and love and grace and, uh, and, and, and but 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 I'm finding today that it's not always such but I I do want to point out what I believe the Christian community is and I don't believe the Christian community is just being inside the church walls right but but we'll talk a little bit more about that later on but 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 I wanted to say that <clears throat> I believe that what God is saying is that the Christian community is a place of of continuing our conversion you know, some of us think when we get baptized and we ready, we ready. But I always say, you know what? Be careful. We ain't ready to tangle with the with, with Satan yet. We ain't ready to tangle with the enemy yet. You know, the apostles they found that out. You know what I'm saying? They found that they wasn't ready, and and, and there were there, there were people that found that they weren't ready at times. And and so, I think that the Christian community is a place of continuing conversion, and also. It's a place where we can go as individuals with a goal, check this out, of just growing together and maturing together. 
you know, we 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 learn to grow. And why is it important? Because this is going to be my question for today. Why is the Christian community important? And for me, one of the reasons it's important is so that just like the passage says, that we don't get caught up by every whim or every golden tongue, smooth talking uh, uh, person who comes through who can quote scripture and who can interpret scripture from a certain way. The, the Christian community. We need one another so that we can protect one another. So with that being said, <clears throat> I want to just kind of get ready to go ahead and introduce my two my two cohorts who are on with me today because this is something that I've been struggling with, not even struggling, something I've been really thinking about, been praying on in my, in my free time, in my alone time. And so today I hope that we can spend this hour just kind of enlightening you on what we go through and what we feel that the Christian community is and how we can bring each other closer to one another during this time where it feels that we are splintered or separated, where we are in different places and we're leading different lives. So with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, Terry, are you on with us today? Yes, I am. Ah, good afternoon, I sir. Am. How you been this week? Yeah, I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Hey, you know, as I just said before, I've been I've been uh, experiencing uh, experiencing periods of uh, <laughs> enlightenment. I'll say it like that, you know. After my periods of uh, of self pity, I'll say it like that. Brad Jason, you on with us this evening? Dun, 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 dun. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you now. I can hear you now. What's up, bro? What are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? How about yourself? Man, you know, I'm holding so, in there. So before Thanks we get asking. started, because y'all, did you say what? I said thank you for asking. Uh, well, good. You know, I'm always concerned. But before we, 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 we get started, I want to just ask uh, the two of you, because, man, y'all gave me some lame mm, yeah, comments there. I, I just want y'all to be as excited as I am, because I'm really excited this evening, I got to tell you. Has anything happened to either of you this week? Have you have you experienced anything that's just led you to believe that you know what I know that God is in control, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing or however you feel about it? Have you experienced anything this week that has just shown you that God is in control and that He is still good no matter what? So for me, I'll tell you, I've gotten probably one of the a, a super high and a super low. Uh, you know, we'll start with the low first. You know, I got this situation with my kids, so I was trying to get a lawyer. And, you know, he was talking about, yeah, this is my normal retainer, but I'm going to have to double it for your case. So I was like, man, that's rough, you know. So it just it just kind of prolonged my situation I had. That was my low part. Now, mm. the high part is I got a girlfriend now, and it's been a, it's been an incredible walk, and more so than the – relationship piece is just or at least my relationship with her it's my relationship with God and how I can already tell he's using this relationship to grow me and her to grow me closer to him so that's yeah. kind of been my week so it's, yeah. it's been it's been a crazy week like high and low all right that's all right that's good though I'm glad to hear that man you know uh, 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 when you get to that point, you know, and you say, well, I found a wife. You know, that God knows that she found a good thing, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Brother Terry, what, what you got? What you got? What, what happened? Hey, greatness. Well, uh, well I'm, I'm kind of like Jason. It's been, a, it's been a very, it's been lows and been highs. And uh, the lows, you know, it's been going on for a while. You know, we've had to put people on furlough with work and, and everything like that. And that just kind of was a low point for me. And uh, now we're going to be able to bring some some people back, which is pretty, which is the high part, which is I'm really said this lets me know that God's got it, and uh, He was a restorer, He'll restore, and uh, make yes, things better than it was before. So you know, it's, I just got to be patient. Amen. That's what I'm talking about, man. I, I'm learning that whole patience thing myself, especially right now, because I feel, uh, man, y'all just have no idea. I just got a call today. And the doctor says, okay, well, we know you were coming in at 7.30 on Monday, but we need you to be here at 5.30. I'm like, really? I'll be just turning over. I probably won't even have had any sleep the night before. <laughs> so, it's, you know, this life is crazy, but I've had some highs, too. Got to talk to my my kids today. 
and they seem like life is just going wonderful for them. So even through this pandemic, they're safe. They're doing what they're supposed to do as young adults. So I'm really proud of them in that regard. And, and that brings me into our topic, because I'm telling you, this this was a this is a stretch for me, and uh, I'm really you know I I really want us to chat about it a, a little bit as much as we can because today I wanted to, I had the question, and the question was. What's the importance of Christian community? What does the Christian community bring? In this time of the pandemic, you know, why is it so important that the Christian community, uh, and I'm going to use the word grow, but you'll find that as we chat, I think the word grow means a couple of different things. But why is it so important you guys think that, just let's talk about some reasons why it's very important that we nurture and that we continue to grow the Christian community. Uh, but I think both of you can agree that that's something that we really need to do. But but I, but I had a couple of points. And, and you know what? <clears throat> I, I can just go by the bullet points because I had this whole perfect talk laid out, but I won't do that. I won't do that because I'll take over everything. But but one of the things that I was thinking about is is, <clears throat> is that the Christian community is great one of the things that I've discovered in my life is that one of the reasons why it's great, and as I was telling you in my introduction, is that in my life I have been, I have, uh, uh, it's been my privilege to meet many different types of Christians. But the biggest thing I got from them in the very beginning as I was growing up was <clears throat> they presented themselves for me, not for me to do what I normally do. Like I used to always talk about the way they dress, talk about the, you know how you got the the one elderly statesman who back now I grew up in the seventies and eighties. He probably had a Jerry curl and a bunch of gold rings on and a big necklace. You know, we made fun of guys like that because we called them Jack Leg, right? But I made fun of these people. But I believe what they were doing is they were inviting me. Here it is, y'all. They were inviting me to treat Christ a little more in my life, meaning. When I looked at them, it wasn't about the outward appearance. It wasn't about the smooth talk. They were inviting me in so that they could introduce me to Christ because I wasn't seeing Christ all the time. And 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 I guess the question I have for you, the two of you guys, and anybody can answer, but why is it so important that we use the Christian community as a way of allowing other people to see Christ in us? Why is that so important? So I, I think when we talk about the Christian community and and just especially in these times, I think, you know, you've got a couple of different things going on. Like for, first of all, you know, the struggles that we are personally feeling, you know, to <clears throat> some of the insecurities, some of the uncertainties, those things, um, to have a group of people that you can find comfort with, but then not just find comfort with those people, but what the Christian community really does is that we come together and we remind each other of, like, who's really in charge, like Terry was saying. You know, God's in control of all things. So to find comfort in people who have similar thoughts about who's in control to give us overall comfort with, you know, with the circumstance. And then beyond that, once we find peace as a community, to be able to, to step out in that peace and, and go out and love the people who aren't part of the community and let them see like, man, you, this all this craziness is going around. How are you so peaceful? How are you so calm? How, you know, aren't you worried? And gives, then that gives us a chance to, you know, really go out there and, 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 and do God's will. And I think when, you, when I think about Christian community, I look at it twofold. First of all, for the, the participants of the community, and then secondly, for the people who the community is actually there for. And see, and that's, that's really important because you get as a kid growing up, of course I was very mature, very mature in 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 in, in Christ. You know, I you know I was just learning. I was I was very very immature in that sense. But I, I think you you hit the nail on the head because I think it's really important that when we when we approach it from the standpoint where, where you're speaking of, is that the world is filled with. <laughs> With immense amounts of evil, and 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 the problem, the problem is a lot of us we don't even see. And 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 here I think you you might well the two of you both said it. You had some high points and low points, but it would be great 
if when you met Christians, especially ones that you held in high regard, that you that they allowed you to see them free from their points of pain, from their their point of brokenness? Because that's I believe that when we pray from a point of brokenness in front of uh there's a people other Christians pray from that point of brokenness, then we allow them to see God at work in our lives. We no longer are those people that they feel like, oh, they just got it all together. You know, I'm praying from that point of brokenness. And then they say, well, he ain't got it all together. He prayed from that point where he was just broken. He, he, he you know, he had just gone through the, whatever it was he was going through. If he prayed from that point, and then, check this out, check this out, what happens is, we get to share with that person, that new person, God's healing and life. How, how many of us, I, I, I got to ask you, how many of us wish that we had somebody to share in the brokenness and the healing with us? But then the question I'm going to ask you on the other side of that is, how many of us allow people to be there for us when we're broken and when we're going through a healing process? That's that's true, and it's it's come it's it comes in times where it's, it's got to be. A lot of people in the body of Christ don't trust. The trust isn't there. The relationship is not there. You see a form of it, because you know like you have a form of it, like a form of godliness, if you will, for lack of a better word. But you don't. Mm-hmm. But it's not. You don't see. You don't. You don't. It doesn't go deeper than than beyond just the surface. There's no trust to be able to say, you know something. I'm naked and I'm I'm not I'm naked and not ashamed and I'm going to cry from my point of pain, you know I need you know I need to get you know and I don't care who sees me, and that means it's got it means you got to one trust God and hope, and prayerfully trust the people that that you're opening up to like that, because you know um, I think about uh, what Jason said earlier, you know the Bible talks about how we are to uh, not forsake the assembly of ourselves as some, over in Hebrews. You know, and how a lot of people forsake people, forsake that gathering because they don't want it to, people to see them for who they really are. That's the reason why you see a lot of people going to places where they can hide, different Christian communities where they can hide because they don't want people to see the real side, the hurt, the whatever they're going through. They want to just see the pleasant side of things of your life and think that you got it all together when in reality you're sitting up in there all jacked. But but isn't that funny though? Because uh, I like I like what you're saying on that. But but isn't that funny? Because again, I started this off by saying one of the uh, the question is uh, the Christian community. Uh, one of the things that we're learning from that is is so that others, you know what I'm saying, can see. It's a way for us to see Christ in others. So I kind of reversed it for mm-hmm. a new Christian or for that person to see Christ in us. Wouldn't it be important for us not to should we trust in God before we trust in man? And what I mean by that Correct. is if I'm trusting if I'm trusting God that you are let's say that you are sent to me and I know I know the scripture not the pearls to swine, I understand that, but but shouldn't I and I have to be careful what I tell you, but shouldn't I trust that God is in the midst and that I can allow you to see certain things? Correct. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. We yeah. say that. We say that. And 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 I and I understand. I totally agree with what you're saying. We say that, but our actions do not reveal that. That you know what I'm saying. So we I'm, say I'm that. hearing you say, "Oh, that. I trust God." Huh? So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let you finish. No, you know, no. We say that. You know, I trust God. But then when it, when we're putting the uh, trust God, whoever you send around me, I'm going to be able to just just stretch out and do whatever and blah 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 and bring it'll bring you glory. I believe it. We say those things, but when the situation happens, when the things happen, it's it's like whatever well, we said we trusted God, we don't we don't allow that to manifest itself in our behavior and the way we engage with I, each other. Does that make sense? It does, but I think I think what makes it difficult for me to totally understand is you're speaking from a uh, position of anonymity, meaning you're saying we, you're generalizing. I'm saying I, and I'm no longer generalizing. Okay. 
So I, I guess okay. the point that I'm saying is, and the question okay. I'm asking is, is that how you're living? Is that the life you're living? Are you allowing others to see, or are you also covering up certain things? Oh, yeah. I mean, there are I'm some things that are just that's private, that's that are just going to be private. It's not, it's not that yeah. I want them to be private. It's not, that's the thing. It's not that I want them to be private. So the question is, are you really trusting God? If you say, well, it's not that I want them to be private, am I really trusting God? Now, now I, I'm, I'm not saying lay out all your personal stuff here, but, but what I'm saying is I believe, and this is the point I wanted to get to, what I believe is we actually stunt the growth of the Christian community because check this, check this. I'm going to jump way ahead. I'm going to jump way ahead because I, I had a point that I wrote down and I wanted to talk about uh, as far as the Christian community is concerned, but that point was size. Is the size of the Christian community important? So let's go ahead and jump into that. <clears throat> is it important that we all have the six flags over Jesus Church, or is it more is it more important <laughs> that we have the huge, gigantic church, <laughs> the mega church as we call it today, or is it more important that we have the church that started in the living room? You see, the question I'm gonna ask the both of you, and let's see if you're gonna hit where I'm at on it. The question I want to ask the both of you is size important when it comes to the Christian community? I think you know. I think I'm the only size that you measure, I think the only size that is important is the size of your faith, and whether you're doing it with two or three people or two hundred people. I think that's what when we start talking about community, especially when we start talking about churches. You know, it's interesting. You know, if you read, we did a uh, we were doing a fast I think last year, and we're doing a Bible study through Acts, and you read about that first century church, and you got to think these are just a handful of people. I mean, we're, we're talking at the most, what, maybe five, six hundred folks, and look what kind of impact they had on their community and the overall world. And they mm-hmm. weren't very big, but their faith was huge. You know, now we got churches, 20,000, 2,000, these huge churches, and they can't even clean up the community that, they, that, that they're in. So I, to answer your question, I don't believe size matters, but I don't believe size is a turn either. I believe when you get a group of believers together, who truly have faith in God and committed themselves to saying, okay, God, your will be done through me. What, what God can do with that is going to be amazing. Well, I guess okay. it goes back, and I'm going to piggyback Jason on this one. And this is the sense of where the Bible talks about whether two or three are gathered, he's in the midst. So I think we've got to understand we're not talk, we're, if we're talking about a congregation, a building of people, that's one thing. But if you're talking about the church, the three of us are here, God is in the midst. Does that make sense? Um, and I think so Absolutely. size doesn't matter. So size doesn't matter. And I think that's the picture. Think that's what's happened to us today is that we believe that the bigger is better when really it's not necessarily bigger, better. It's just better. It's about whether you've connected with with, with other people of God and, regar- and regardless of the number of them, you know, God can be in the midst of that. Okay? And there's something so, to be said so, because – oh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead, Jesse. You go right ahead. Well, yeah, like I was saying, to, to Terry's point, you know, you hear all the argument. Well, if we get a we get 100 Christians together, look at all the resources we can use and we can spend – and, there, and, and that's mm-hmm. a true statement, but if we're mm-hmm. really honoring God, it's not about our resources and our power. It's about God's power. It's about, you know, um, I remember that scripture, and I can't remember who it was, but it was a battle. And the, the general had taken a whole bunch of people ready to go fight. And slowly but surely, God put test after test and got that number whittled mm-hmm. down to 300. And then he took mm-hmm. those 300 men and destroyed the right. legions of, of, of others. And so mm-hmm. we, when I hear that argument, it's like, well, when we got a bunch of us together, look what the resources we, we can do. My question is, man, <clears throat> it's not the resources that we have that gives us the power. It's our faith in God. So if God can take my three, uh, the three of us and our strong faith, I think we can, we can match up to almost any, any, any church out there because it's about his power, mm-hmm. his authority, and, and what he brings. Correct. Okay, and I, I agree with that. Uh, I, I, I think y'all approached it from a larger scale than I was looking at. 
because, again, I'm talking about new conversions and new converts, but that's okay because you're absolutely right. The size, the number of people, the size of the building, it does not matter because mm-hmm. I think that the whole purpose, the whole purpose when showing the world Christ, check this out, when we're trying to go out <laughs> and, 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 and make new converts, when we're trying to go out, as I like to call it, introduce people to Christ, look, look at what's important about the Christian community for that and the way I look at it. I think that the Christian community has to be personal enough, check this out, check mm-hmm. this out, to meet the needs of persons in the group. All right, it, it has to be small enough for everybody to feel like they, or for everybody to be directly involved. So, what do I mean by that, Karen? You you definitely hit it. People join these mega church congregations. Let's call them Six Flags Over Jesus. That's a that's something I heard <laughs> first moved to Louisville, Kentucky, and it just won't leave me. Okay, you join mm-hmm. these big giant churches so you can get lost. Well, how, how do you get lost in church? How do you get lost? Somebody that know you. Yeah, that's true. They know you, but they don't know nothing about you. They know your face. They know your name in church. Mm-hmm. Like on the block, my name is D-Nice, but I go to church. My name is Cedric. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They know me in the church, but they don't know me. And, and and God knows me and God sees everything, but I sit in that church and I act like I'm somebody I'm not. I'm acting like I understand everything that that preacher is saying, and I understand nothing. Because the reason I understand nothing is because when I get up and I leave that pew, whatever it was he said to me stays right there in that church. I come in and out of that building with the same carnal attitude, week in, week out, no matter what. And so I think it's important. I think the size of the church does matter in that regard. It needs to be large enough or small enough that each of us can in a very personal way so that each now, of us Cedric, feels that we are – yes, yes, go right ahead. I, I'm going to have to challenge you on that because I will tell go you ahead, there is something about those bigger churches. And you're right. When someone can walk in there and get lost, but here's the deal. They're walking in, right? I would never. I would tell you that person who it's Sunday morning. They just woke. They just coming back home from the club, and it's like I'm gonna stop being at church. They're not gonna go to one of those small mom and pop church where everybody's gonna look at them and look crazy at them. They're gonna go to one of those bigger churches. But the beautiful thing is, they're giving God a chance. And and I hear what you're saying about the intimacy of church and how close we should be. And I totally agree. But I also, I've also been at big churches, and I know there are people walking in off the street that would never walk into a small church, never even think about trying to get to know Jesus. You know, so I appreciate the, those, those mega churches, the six flags over Jesus, like you call them, because they do have a broader reach, and they can get those people in those, and they can get the people in the building. Now, going back to what Terry says, it's not about the building or the congregation. It's about the people, and that's who makes the church. Once they get in that building, it's a responsibility of each individual, each one of us as Christian individuals to say, okay, God, how are mm-hmm. you going to use me with all these people you're bringing into the mix, you know? So, okay. I, all right, so I, I hear what you're saying about that. Well, I, th- I think you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I, I think you completely misinterpreted what I said. I said the church has to be big enough or small enough for the individual to feel connected. I'm not saying it can't be a six bags right. over Jesus. That's not what I was saying. I mean, right. No, no, no. I'm not okay. saying. I'm not saying it's better to be a huge church or attend a huge church, or me and you in my living room. No, no, no. No, neither is better or worse than the other, unless I can't feel connected in either one. That's all I'm saying. It's relative to the individual. Is that person mm-hmm. able to connect in the church? That's what I'm saying. So I agree with everything you said, Jason, except for the fact I think you misquoted me. That's all. You misunderstood what I was saying. I, I'm in 100% agreement with you. Because what are the benefits of some of the larger churches? Oh, resources. You got, I mean, so much, they got so much reach. I mean, it's like you said, Jason said, they have a whole lot going on. Different fellowship opportunities, probably a family life center. They got all these different things going on, which is great. Yeah. Look, places to be connected. Which, which, right. Places that can get connected. 
But but you know, but, like, but, but before you get connected doing all those resource things, you need to first be connected to God, and you need to first feel like you have a place with God, right? Yeah. No. See, yeah, that's, and I think that's that, that's the part. See, that's the part I think we, you know, let's go back to that person in the club. Is just coming from the club. They don't feel like they have a place with God, right? But, 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 they know but something's missing in their life. What they feel in their heart. You know nothing you say what? about but, what that person thinks. You, you you don't know another person's heart. Right, but so if you listen to their story, I can go to the club. Right, but I, yo, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, here's okay, here's what the, here's what I'm thinking. If you go back to what Cedric read in the scriptures earlier, Cedric read something in the scriptures that was, I don't think we need to really grab a hold of. Because when people first give their life to Christ, there's a group of people mm-hmm. that are been raised up that should be discipling them. And if people right. aren't discipled properly, then what's happening yeah. is they're gonna be they come in they're gonna feel disconnected, they're not gonna feel apart. Because I've seen both things happen within our church. We've I've seen the when people have been connected and when they've gone through new member orientation, they got connected with the mm-hmm. group of people that they went through and they were in mm-hmm. it. And then we had mm-hmm. those groups that joined and they didn't go through new normal new member orientation like they were supposed to. And they were like, Well, I just feel like I'm not connected. I feel like I'm not this, I'm not that and we're a smaller church. And so but uh-huh. there's a part that has to happen like that it was saying in the scriptures where it has to be some discipling going on. That's why there's apostles, pastors, preachers, teachers, all this for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh-huh. Okay. So that that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So regardless if it's a big church or if it's if it, or if it's a big not church, big congregation or small congregation, there has to be some discipling going on. Which means, you know, and, 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 and which means that we've got to not only teach them the word, but we got to teach them about relationships in the in the in the kind of, in the body of Christ, and how, and really be having those things start to happen simultaneously. Now, when you Absolutely. say about discipleship, you, you're speaking about that that individual who's coming into the church, right? Discipling that yeah, new that, that new person, right? Well, yeah, but well, no, that I, and discipling the continuing process. Okay. Right. I I think it should be I think it should be uh, another reason the church community is important is for accountability and guidance. That's where the, the discipleship. That's where all of that falls in. Mm-hmm. Accountability and guidance. So go ahead, Jason. Go ahead, finish what you're saying. I'm sorry. But so because I because I I'm trying to paint a picture, right? Because I've heard so okay. many stories from people who said, okay. "Look, I walked in a church. I didn't feel like I was being loved. I didn't feel like I was." I didn't feel like I had a, a relationship with God. You know, I thought he was angry with me, you know, and I walked into this building and I felt love from human beings, which helped me reflect on the love of God, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about that person who does not feel like they have a relationship with Christ. who does not feel like they can be loved, you know, by God or this God oh. love that they hear about is not for them, you know? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I and I think about you know what are some places where that person can go, you know because if, you know I've always heard something people don't care about how much you know until how they know until they know how much you care, right? Right. So I can't tell right. you about a guy that cares about you until you know that I care about you. Now I'm going to hear mm-hmm. what you have to say to me, you know. So. Mm-hmm. You know, when when I reflect on on like churches and, and what churches are about, it is for that person, that person who like, you know, I don't know anything about Jesus, I don't know anything about God, and I don't think I can be loved by Him. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, well, let me ask this question. Let me ask this question because I, I want to appeal to the broader mind. Jason, have you ever come in contact with a person and never ever even you never had that conversation about Christ with that person? But that person instinctively knew and understood that you cared about them. Yeah. So, see, to me, that answers uh, that that answers what you were saying. I, 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 I you say, well, a person. Uh, how did you put it? A person. Uh, so, no, man, make, say that again for me. Make that quote. 
Oh, well, people don't ahead, care about question. how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. So why is it that one of the one of the main focuses of uh, the church community isn't to <clears> show? Because I don't. I, why isn't that one of the main focuses? Why don't you think that's the main focus of the church community is to show people that they care, that they love them? Because I think that's the. I mean, that, that's what God says, right? Right. All right. And so, I agree. So, I think that should be the main focus of the church community. So, so when you meet somebody, that, that I, I think rather than because one of the things that I personally, uh, I'm proud to say that I'm not guilty of is beating somebody over the head with the words. I don't come beat you up and throw a whole bunch of scriptures out there. Terry will tell you that that's not my thing. I will speak that scripture. You may not know what scripture I'm coming from. But my verbiage, that's what it will be. If you go back and look it up, you're like, ah, oh, man, you, uh, Terry, Terry used to do it to me all the time. And you know, that's coming, that's, that's Ephesians. Or, or you know what, that right there is directly out of the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, whatever. We can communicate with people just showing them how much we care, just in the way we treat them, the way we actually love them. And matter, matter of fact, we may even tell them. Um, and, and I think that's important. But I also think it's important that we keep it in, in my mind, in proper context. Because, because really, why is it so important for us to have a church community? It's for the reasons that we're talking about right now, plus a whole bunch of other reasons. But I also want to mm-hmm. want to put out there is that it's not just for the person we're trying to introduce to Christ. It's for us too, because again, as I said before, one of the things is accountability. Accountability right. and guidance. Even though I've been in the church for quite a while, I've been serving in in ministry all the way back since probably 1996. I've been serving in ministry, and and I can tell you that the church community is as much for me as it is for that new convert or that person who's lost and doesn't know Christ, as it is for that person in that abusive relationship, as it is for that person who's suffering with uh, mental illness. The church, the church community is as much for me as it is for them. Am I right? Uh, well, am I not reading true. this right? That's am true. I thinking this wrong? Be- no, it's for it's for it's for it's for, it's for you. It's for every one of us that believes. And it's not it's not. And I guess my thing is, and we all have a responsibility to help each other and help people, whether it be new converts, somebody that's been in Christ for just about two, three years, or whatever. Or been there all your life. It's for all of us to help each other to um, become um, to grow and to become more like Christ and to become and to grow together um, and to um, you know encourage one another. It's all, it's for everybody. Like it's for all of us like that. It's not just for a certain set of people. I, right. But 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 I like the fact that you came back. You kind of corrected something you said. In my opinion, you said all of us because I believe that. The church community is for the non-believer as well as the believer. Oh man, I might get smacked a couple of times for that, <laughs> but but I believe it's because check it out. If you're a non-believer and there's no church community for you to connect with, meaning there's no Jason, there's no Terry, there's no Cedric, then what else you got? What else you got? You know what I'm saying? There's no place for that mm-hmm. for those individuals to turn. How can you become a convert if at least the church isn't there? And as you notice, I'm saying the mm-hmm. church is the individual person. So, right. so um, I truly believe that um, size of congregations as you differentiated earlier, Terry, is, is actually right. But but I think that's important. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's important for us to know that because when we walk outside, when we go outside of the, the, the church doors, mm-hmm. we need to be able to disciple people, whether we know them or not, is not important. We need to be able, like, like uh, Terry, you remember when I first moved to Kentucky, I was grumpy. I guess people thought people thought I was mean because I never, I always had a scowl on my face. I never smiled and all that stuff, right? You remember those days? Yeah. And, and the thing was, when you and I met, you never returned that gesture to me. Matter of fact, remember I said I didn't even know what I was doing it. But Not I'm sorry, I'm I said when we first met, I, I mm-hmm. didn't ever have a smile on my face. I could turn it on real quick, 
and then turn it right back wow. off. But you know I didn't care about what, who I was talking to. I said, but you never mm-hmm. returned the favor to me. That gesture, you never showed me that gesture. And so as time went right. on, I got to know you for you, but Christ was always the center of our friendship. We, were, we both right. believed and, and Christ was always the center. And so what, what happened? Well, I matured in the Word. And then there came a time when, as I was maturing, check this out, as you were, I was receiving your guidance and you were guiding me along, right, back to Christ, uh, 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 what happened? Then there came a point in time when you, there was this level of accountability that you had to hold me to, right? But it was a very gradual process, am I correct? And so I okay. use that example to say that when we meet people who aren't where we are, and following Christ, it needs to be a gradual nurturing process. Right. Too many times have I gone into a to a to a meeting or a church congregation and people say, Well, you've been to three meetings, you need to be this and you need to be that. Maybe they're trying to feel their way through. I think that being Christians, another reason for that that I truly believe that that, that we are who and what we are, the Christian community, another reason that we're so powerful is that we need to uh, uh, realize our power. We, we need to realize that, you know what, the reason we're called the community is because there's more than one. And, and, and the function of the church, huh, this is where I need to go, the function of the church is more important than the size of the church. In other words, the form, a, a lot of times we get caught up in, in like, Sherry, I know being a pastor, you like to start church on time. We don't have to not start church right. on time, but we don't have to blast everybody that comes in late either. Am I right? Right. Correct. You know, I, 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 I think that when we look at the church, the form itself is not important. It's the function of the church that's important. So so, so mm-hmm. let's talk about some of the functions, uh, uh, Pastor Sherry. You being a pastor, you being the, uh, a bit more seasoned than even I myself am with that. Like this whole call to community. Like, what's your take on it as far as function over form? Like, like how the church um, functions as the, the church should function as like it did, I believe, in in the days of old, in a sense, where it talks about where they mm. came together and nobody had a want for anything. Everybody's needs were being met. I mean, and honestly, not, and I, I, I love like what happened when my when my dad passed back in January. It was a really, mm-hmm. it was a rough time for me and my family. But one of the things I love about our church is how they came together. There was never a day for almost two weeks, for almost literally two to three weeks, we didn't have. My mom didn't have to cook a thing. We didn't have to cook nothing. I mean, it was like they came. Anything that we needed, if we needed to get some things done, if we needed um, some people to speak during the funeral service or be a pallbearer yeah. or, or or usher, greet, sing, whatever it was that was needed, they were there, you know, and it was and it was one of those type of things. Wasn't, we didn't have to ask. Wow. It was one of those yeah. things we didn't have yeah. to ask. It was just, it was, that was mm. because they felt like they were a part of a body. So I look at all that, yeah. and I'm like, that's the way the body should be. It shouldn't be where, you know, if, if you see your brother hurting or if you see your sister hurting, you should be able to be the church. Yeah. Yeah. Be the church. This mm. is not, this is, that's what you are. You are the church. And so and I guess those are the things that, you know, just the simple things. If you know someone, if you're standing in line, I saw this the other day, if you're standing in line, and somebody doesn't have, you know, they can't pay for their, pay for their groceries or pay for their gas or whatever, you know. Be the church. Meet you have it. Meet the need. You know, keep it. God will bless you. You know, um, don't do it for that reason, but just do it because that's the, but you know that you know, it's, it's the it's the Christian, it's the believer thing to do. Yeah, what you do for the least of these. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And, and, mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's mm-hmm. important. That's important when I think about form and function because. Uh, a mm-hmm. lot of people think it's 
you know, and again, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not knocking it because there's a place for everything in the church. Yes, correct. It, it thinks everything should be done decent and in order. I, I don't have a problem with that form, right? But if doing right. things decent and in order means leaving certain people out, then I have to question right. the function of what you're doing. Right. And 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 so uh, the two of you have hit on it. The whole entire conversation is about love, showing. Everybody showing all the people the love that God has for us, and, and and I think that as long as we get to that, then I, I think we're function as long as we're functioning properly, showing that love. I think again, form it has its place, but is it the most important thing? So I have to say no. So so my next question, my next question this is a this is just a thought that I wrote down earlier. So y'all gotta forgive me, but I think another of the uh, another function of the church is, is, and this is a benefit for the church community, is prayer and worship. You know, let's say I ain't been in the church. That, that I'm that person that Jason described earlier. Would it be all right for me to show up on a whim, no matter the size of the church, just to ask for prayer or just to participate in worship? But is it wrong? Terry, you remember the time I came into church and there was a guy who, well, he was a bit inebriated. <laughs> he was a bit flashy. Mm-hmm. But he came into church and he celebrated. And he, <laughs> oh, boy, did he fine. celebrate. But he was just standing yeah. out on the corner not knowing what to do with himself because he hung out late the night before and he was intoxicated mm-hmm. and he was ashamed of himself and he grew up hating himself. And and remember, I don't know if you remember his testimony, he talked about how mm-hmm. the one of the reasons he got out of church was because of the way his family members thought about his lifestyle. Mm-hmm. That's gonna bring up a point I had thought about. So the function of the church yep. is to love everyone. What about mm-hmm. when somebody ain't really living like what we think what we know the Bible says we should live like. I think everybody is pretty is pretty clear. I mean, <laughs> I think the Bible is pretty, is pretty clear. Yeah, really. everybody's everybody. It didn't say everybody who's living right. Because if you want to be honest, no one's really living right. You know, all of sin is so, short of the glory of God. <laughs> right. You know, so I think you know when we talk about that church community and and we got we go back to the question you asked earlier. I think, mm-hmm. you know, anybody who's living out what God called us to do and one of the things God calls us to do is to pray and worship. So if you don't mm-hmm. if you ain't spend one day in the church or let's say the last the last ten years you've been doing everything against the church and all of a sudden you decide you want to come in and pray, man, you're doing what God called you to yeah. do. I'm gonna support you. I'm gonna stand right next to you. Mm-hmm. You know? And so mm-hmm. I think <laughs> One of the things I think we do as a church is that we have to keep continue to further God's will on this earth. And, you know, I've already heard something. You encourage behavior you want repeated. So I could care less if you, you were at the club last night and you still probably hung over. You are worshiping God in, in, in your fullness. I'm going to encourage that behavior because as a church, my job is to try to get the will of God to be manifested in earth and, and everybody in the, in the earth. So when you're doing that, you know, I think as, as as a community, if we're really committed to God and God's will, then we're celebrating that, right? Now, at the yeah. same time, we're having yeah. a conversation and be like, you know what? Maybe your worship should be a lot better if you were a little bit more sober. Hey, get up, go home and get go home and get a nap. Right. Maybe your worship is harder. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm gonna celebrate that like your worship you and and I like how Terry said, I'm like I'm gonna disciple and maybe guide you to how to improve that worship, you know. You know, how do you improve that testimony, you know, something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, and, 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 and this is what I'm talking about. The beauty in this this conversation is this, and I'm going to ask both of you, and I know you already do it, but I'm going to ask that we really be diligent because I, I, every day I have to pray several times a day because of the way I feel about somebody. And I am not, it's not a secret, okay? And my big mouth will open up and I'll say, you know what, I hope they catch coronavirus or, you know, and I know I'm wrong. So I have to pray about that. So what I'm going to ask, you know, and this is what I'm trying to do myself as well, is that, you know, when we come in contact, I know we got our six-foot rule, which is great at this point. Uh, And, you know, 
before we even get ready to sign off, Jess, we're going to have to talk about that. But to pray for everybody you come in contact with. And when you meet that person who needs Christ, you know, let's pray that God has called us. If God calls us to lay hands, let's pray first. Let's get instruction from God. But let's, let's, let's do that, and let's make it a point to continue to be the church community that we know the church community is supposed to be. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, man, y'all got to help me. I apologize. Sometimes my medicine gets me a little off kilter. But, Jason, we were talking about something earlier, and it was about, oh, 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 yeah. Love. It was about the Jason, hug. Jason and I had to, yeah, we were having a deep discussion. Jason, go ahead and set it up for us, if you will. I, All right. I want to so give you know another guys, opinion on this. All right. So, you know, we got the social distancing thing and, you know, the, the fact that we're supposed to kind of stay apart. Well, I gave a set of scenario. You meet this person, you don't know, right? And they need a hug. And you don't feel comfortable giving that hug. You know, we got we got all the C D C guidelines out there telling us, Hey man, you shouldn't be you should be nine weeks within six feet of each other, you know. So the challenge I give a set is like, so what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so shall I go <laughs> Cause my opinion is I ain't getting you no hug unless God told me to. I'm going to pray about it right then and there. I'm going to do an instant prayer. And if God don't say hug this person, I'm sorry. We ain't doing it. And, and, and I'm just being honest. And I guess my question is, am I wrong for feeling that way? And I'm going to and I'm and I'm throw this out. Okay, this is going to be crazy. Jesus and lepers. I'm gonna leave it right there with okay. that. Did he did he have to pray before he did it? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Terry, and that came up. Lepers, you know, we 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 saying, talked about that. Lepers. We talked about Jesus was around the lepers <laughs> with the infectious diseases, and he he didn't he didn't think twice about it. You, he didn't you know? think twice about it. Mm. You know, and, and I, I think I, we fell along. One of those moments. Oh, okay, I believe it's one of the moments the where you, if you're what? acting in God. What about for those people who don't know the all the background of Jesus and the lepers? Put it in plain English for us. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is opinion. This is this is this is not opinion. Right. You know, this is opinion. You know, <laughs> my opinion is I'm gonna pray about it right away. As soon as they look at me, I'm, mm-mm. and then I'm going to pray about it. If, that's, if I know they want a hug, I'm praying. I'm make sure they ain't trying to pickpocket me or nothing. You know, be wise. Never mind. I'm just joking. But but I'm going to pray about it. And and if I believe God said no, you get no hug from Caesar. Now, unless you want to cover yourself in the trash bag from head to toe, then I'll hug the trash bag while you're in it. So, in essence, you got a hug. <laughs> I know you're not going to be in front of but I'm totally being honest. No, that's what's hilarious. Jason, what's you are you? being completely honest. <laughs> what's that you, Jason? So, I, so I, I would tell you honestly, I totally agree yeah. with your answer. It's not, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's the will right. of God manifesting in you, right? Because, you know, maybe God did <clears> put that person <throat> in that moment in front of you to give you that hug, to give that hug, mm. and that's going to be the catalyst that they need to develop a relationship with Christ. So if you don't take advantage of it, then what, right. that's a missed opportunity. On the opposite end, just because you're a huggy-duggy person, you want to hug everybody, and, you know, God mm-hmm. didn't call you to hug them, or whatever, whatever results of you doing what you want to do, you're going to have to own that, you know? But I like your answer. It's seeking God and saying, okay, why, you know, what's, what's the next step? And that kind of goes back to what you were saying, Terry. It's like, are you operating mm-hmm. out of a spirit of fear? or a spirit of faith. And do the when I talk about I'm the church and I have faith in God and I trust God, does that does my faith show up show up in the things that I do? Right? Cuz if I'm mm-hmm. acting scared right. and I'm like, "Oh, I'm so scared about doing this." Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about I got faith in God, that don't kind of match up, right? Right. You know, so that's that's kind of my thought, you know. Okay. And I'm the opposite. I I have well, faith hey. in God to tell me not to hug him because I I'm I'm a huggy guy, so God's going to tell me not mm-hmm. to because I'll probably end up doing it. <laughs> See, cause my, my thought is this right here. You can't you can't go, okay, let's say, let's say you don't consult God and you go do what you want to do. You can't go do your own thing, contract, let's say you contract COVID-19 
and then your kidneys fail. The only reason I say kidneys because I'm looking at Scarface now. He's talking about his kidneys failing due to COVID-19. But 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 let's just say this that that now all of a sudden you're going through kidney failure, and then you say, well, this is God's will, then so be it. I get it. I understand it. But you can't be mad at God either. You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't consult him. But man, man, I can take this down a whole rabbit hole, and we can be talking about this all weekend. Um, before we get ready to close out, do like I always do. I want to ask anybody got any pearls of wisdom that we need to be working on until the next show that we need to be exercising. Besides some beans be that we church. got in our closet, right? Be, be the, the church. church. Ooh, I like that right. one. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna co-sign on that one. Be the church. Yep. All right. Be the church. <laughs> well, I do absolutely love that. Be the church and and. Uh, Terry, since you have got our last word of wisdom, you want to say just a quick prayer for all everybody listening to tonight. We just want to pray something really nice over everybody. Okay, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this time of gathering. Father God, of sharing. Father God, we thank you for being in the midst. Because you said whether two or three are gathered, you'll be in the midst. So, Father, we thank you for your presence. And we thank you for how you spoke true and clear today. And, Father, we ask you to be with those who are listening to be the church. Give them the strength and the courage to be the church in these times and so that they, so that people can see you in their lives. And so, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory because we want to lift you up for all men to see so that they can be drawn to you and accept you as, as Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, I want to thank you all. And as I'm having to live the words that I speak every week, you all know how it goes. Relentless pursuit. You know what? Oh, man, mm, find it, embrace it, and pursue it. And that will be your relentless pursuit. And this week we are finding that God's strength in us, and we want everybody to experience God through us. So as we sign off for this week, we'll see you again next week. God bless you. We love you. Sister Kim, if you will, take us out.
Picking up joy like peanut butter cookies. Get a taste of him and you might start juking. Get the salary, hallelujah, got everybody looking. That's okay, though. Yes, sir, he's solid. Ten toes down, he endows me with knowledge. Provide strength when I'm weak in my body. I bounce back with a fight like Ali. The Roche, gotta know he don't play. The big homie on the block with the most games. I just lean on him like a brick wall. Catch your back when you slack, make the big fall. What a big dog, thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, for giving life and sending down the Holy Christ. A refuge and fortress of solitude. I'm fixed up with a sense like Adam.